Hey everyone, we're going to start today off with a little bit of historical sight as I have gotten here to Pompeii Pillars National Monument. Um, something to do with the Lewis and Clark Trail expedition, so go check it out. Hmm, why not put solar on this teepee? <laughs> I'm going to go inside the building here and get some information. It's uh, going to be later today, 102 degrees. Yeah, hot, hot, hot. Uh, right now it's like 82 and I've got the fans on in the RV. If it was going to be any warmer, I would just, even for 20 minutes, I'd start the generator up and leave the, cat, the uh, AC on for Jacks. But he'll be, he'll be okay for 20 minutes. Oh, instant air conditioning. It's a bull boat here. Huh. It's one way to float. I mean, back in the day, rivers were really the only way that they could travel, you know? Make a boat and uh, travel down the river. So let's, let's go try to find their, their signature uh, up here on the rock. Check out that canoe. You want to go rafting in that? Got to be pretty brave. I think Lewis and Clark and I would all get along really well. They obviously loved to stay near bodies of water during their exploration west, so I feel like I feel like I can totally relate to those two. <laughs> all right, well we're going to follow the footsteps of William Clark now. They've kind of built this neat little walkway right along the path that he took. Might be some good views up here too. Here we are up here at the top. Well, halfway up at the top. Got the Yellowstone River over there. See all the mountain ranges. and Makes sense that you'd get a pretty good idea for where you want to go once you get up high, right? Uh, over here in the stone, uh, although there is a lot of graffiti, um, you're going to find William Clark's uh, signature here in the rock. I guess that's graffiti too, but it's protected graffiti. It says July 25th, 1806, W. Clark. The ground on which Clark stood has weathered away, but his signature is not. Because of the remaining physical evidence, the site is one of the few places along the entire Lewis and Clark Trail where you can be assured of standing in the footsteps of William Clark and other members of the expedition. Let's go back to the RV, get on the road, and go find a neat place to boondock. You know I'm going to be looking for some waterfront property. Oh yeah! Crickets! They're loud! Picnic table, shade, fire pit, leftover wood. Uh, obviously, we'll point out the elephant in the room. There's a highway right there. Uh, but that's how I found this place. I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. What I had actually done was I backtracked five miles. I drove that way, looked down here, and said, oh, got off the next exit, made a U turn, looked on my ways map to see where the access and frontage roads lead to this. That's how I found this place. Then when I was out on the main road there, I saw that sign that said, Manual Lisa Fishing 
something, whatever. So it is called something, but uh, I, don't, I don't really know what to call it except that uh, we're in, near Bighorn, uh, uh, exit 49 off of I-94. And actually, I'm gonna do something brand new here, guys. Here's, here's what we're gonna do, because a lot of people ask me where to give a lot more information about where I'm at, like location-wise. Well, that's easy to do when you go to something like Pompey Pillars, the Lewis and Clark place, because it's got an address. Something like this, well, it's kind of a lot harder to kind of share it with people. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to give you the exact GPS location numbers, la longitude, latitude, GPS locations. I'm gonna put those at the bottom of the screen right now. I'll also put them in the video description uh, below as well. And what you can do is you can log on to Google Earth, uh, the app on the phone, or just Google Earth, plug in the coordinates exactly how they're written with the point and the comma and the space and the negative and everything, and hit go, and Google Earth will show you exactly where I'm at. There's a tiny little fish in there. Um, and also, if you use Waze, like I use Waze, you can type in the GPS coordinates directly into Waze, exactly as it is, and then hit search, and it'll say receive location. You say drive. You can literally drive to exactly where I parked my RV with, with Waze. So from here on out, all the way as we go east, I am going to continue to give GPS locations of all of these free, neat little uh, camp spots that I find along my travels. That way you guys can enjoy them and I can share them with you and I can find them later. I'm like, well, I don't even remember what city I was in. Well, now I'll, now I'll always know exactly where the locations are. So it's the Yellowstone River, obviously. Uh, Lewis and Clark may have even camped on this exact spot along their travels. Uh, a few bullet holes in there. Uh, let's see here. No information about camping on that sign, but let's go back and read this other sign. I mean, look where I'm at. Not cool or what? Even got some shade. But now that my generator works, I can even run my AC if I absolutely wanted to. Crickets are everywhere and they are loud. Sounds like a siren going off. I don't care. Oh, got a bathroom over here, a little porta potty. Probably not any running water, but it's always worth a shot. I don't know how they would have running water. I guess I gotta stop calling them bathrooms because they're just porta potties. They're 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 dry dry ba bathrooms restrooms. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. A dry restroom. Clean though. I'm a little bit shocked that I'm the only one out here in the middle of summer. But here's another sign. Oh, there you go. That's exactly what I was looking for. Manual Lisa fishing access site. Camping limited to seven days. Pack it in. Pack it out. All right. How about that? Bring your RV or a tent and just live down here on the Yellowstone River for seven days. Oh, it's so cool. Absolutely loving life right now. Everything is perfect. I hope you're all doing well, too. I, I, I really do. I, I'm not just, not just trying to rub in stuff. I hope you all are doing well. Happy to share the journey with you. Now, here's a curiosity. As the campground also goes underneath the highway... Only reason I'm really even gonna bring this up is obviously people camp here. You can see the campfire right there, uh, but you have to deal with that. So, oh, it's a lot cooler under here though. Okay, so that's why. That's why you would do it. If it was too hot, like it's gonna be in the hundreds today, you could park right here under the bridge and have shade all day. Yes, you gotta deal with the noise. Then when the sun goes down, move your RV back over there away from the highway. but I think this is a great place to plop a chair in the shade. Throw the line out. Oh yeah.
Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.